In this video, we're gonna go over six tips that you can use to improve your route climbing. I'm Josh, one of the coaches here at Lattice, and I specialize in outdoor route climbing. My first tip is to build up a pyramid of routes. What I mean by this is building a foundation of climbing on easier terrain and not always working at your limit. I would also recommend climbing on a variety of terrains and styles. What this allows you to do is gain experience on an array of different movements and techniques. It's much easier to work on these skills in a scenario that's below your limit, so that when you do come to your hard project, you have these skills and techniques perfected and can execute them without thinking. Building up a pyramid of routes also allows for regular success, which is a great way to keep up the motivation, especially at the start of your climbing journey. My next tip would be to try routes with other people. This is a great way to improve and is also lots of fun. It can be really motivating to climb with somebody who shares your passion and motivation for a route. Climbing is essentially problem solving, and therefore two minds is always better than one. When climbing on your own, it can be easy to get sucked into your own ways and habits, which may not be the most efficient way to climb a route. Watching somebody else climb can be a great way to realize where you may be going wrong and avoid falling into this trap. Following on from this, another really good way to analyze where you may be going wrong and also what you're doing well is to record yourself whilst climbing. This is definitely something that I think people should be doing more often as it's a really useful tool that can take your climbing to the next level and improve the efficiency of your sessions. In a way, it's like being your own climbing partner as it allows you to take a step back after climbing and pick up on things that you may not have noticed in the moment. Things to look for would be, for example, how to improve your body positions so you can climb the route more efficiently and also maybe look for hand and foot holds that you might have missed whilst climbing. One of the best ways to take your route climbing to the next level is to maximise your pacing. Pacing is essentially the speed at which you climb. This is individual to everyone and will of course depend on the style of the route. However, Often, the most effective pace is the fastest that you can climb without sacrificing accuracy and efficiency. Effective pacing is a skill that is learned over time as you get more miles in on the rock and become accustomed to different movements. When working or red pointing a route, try and experiment with different climbing paces to see what works best for you. Something that's really important is to focus on improving your accuracy before you try and improve your climbing speed. This is because if you sacrifice your efficiency and technique for fast climbing, this can lead to bad habits when it comes to technique and harm your progression. A great way to improve your accuracy and efficiency and subsequently climbing pace is to include technique drills into your training. What I like to do is spend a few minutes during my warm up working on my footwork. For example, I will often complete foot walks on a systems board to really hone in my accurate foot placements. Essentially, what this is, is placing your hands in a fixed position and walking your feet into extended positions whilst focusing on accurate foot placements. The next tip is to work your resting positions. This is often an area that can be neglected when it comes to root climbing, but there is lots of technique and little intricacies that go into resting effectively. My advice would be to treat rests as you would moves on a route. Experiment and perfect your body position. Take time to learn how much you're able to relax onto the holds and also how long you're able to stay in the rest before it becomes ineffective. Wherever possible, try to place as much weight through your feet as you can. Some ways to do this would be to try bringing your hips close to the wall or also looking for sneaky heel hooks or knee bars. Another thing that's well worth paying attention to is the amount of time that you take between switching hands on a rest. Often on good holds, it can be more effective to leave longer in between shakes. However, on poor rests with small holds, it can often be better to do short, sharp shakes and switch hands more often. Love them or hate them, knee bars are a great tool to have as part of your repertoire. Knee bars can sometimes be thought as a bit of a cheat in climbing. However, this is not always the case. And as with any other technique in climbing, there is lots of nuance and skill that is only learned with time and practice. We could make an entire video just on knee bars, but here I'm just gonna show you a couple of techniques that you can use to make the most out of them. So the first thing you want to do is put as much surface area as possible in contact with the hold. We've got an example knee bar here. And as you can see, I'm gonna use this orange foothold and then I'm gonna be placing my knee against this purple hold here. 
One way to get the most surface area as possible in contact with the hold is to look at your hip positioning. What we see with a lot of climbers is they will start with their hips in a very low position and what they will do is they will use their calf to drive up into the hold and this method can be quite inefficient. Instead, what you should do is start wherever possible with your hips in quite an elevated position above where they need to be. This allows you to place the whole of the lower quadricep in contact with the hold and then what you should do is sink down into the position opposed to driving up. What this also does is it allows you to engage your larger muscle groups, which reduces the stress on the calf, which is a much smaller muscle and likely to be the first point of failure. The final thing to look at is the positioning of your other foot. This is something that is often overlooked, but can be a really good way to A, improve the stability of the position and B, reduce the stress on your core. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.